Live from Palo Alto, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering I.O. Brought to you by I.O. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Peter Burns. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley. This is theCUBE on Sand Hill Road at the Rosewood Hotel for IO Conversations, part of the Data Center as a platform conference here. And our next guest is Mark Musselman from Vapor IO and Bruce Taylor, Data Center Dynamics. Guys, let's, uh, let's jump into it. You guys are leading a panel, on a panel around strategic co-location, data center of the future. What is the big trend that you guys are seeing right now? Because the data center we all know is people want to get out of that business. But ultimately, how does it, what does it look like? What does it look like going forward? At least customers want to get out of the business. Yeah. Customers want to get out of the business of managing data centers. Sure. They do want to get out of the business of managing data centers. Uh, but there's so many options now, right? Do they want their own co-location? Do they want to create a private cloud that's managed by someone else at some level? Like maybe it's just infrastructure as a service, but it is not in their facility. Then they have all the public clouds. I think it's going to get, it needs, it, it'll be more complex for a while, and then it'll simplify as the software catches up and as uh, the technology and networking catches up. By complex, I mean, you're going to have your own data center for a while. You're going to have Amazon, you're going to have Azure, you're going to have software, you're going to have any number of providers that um, accumulate to give you the best experience and bang for the buck. They call that hybrid cloud right now. That's kind of what everyone's kind of talking about. They are, yeah. Microsoft has something called Azure Stack, which is basically you run Azure in by yourself and then also burst out to you know their public cloud. And so, but they're not there yet. Um, they they will be later, you know, in the year. And, uh, We're waiting for that to see what proprietary hooks they have into the stack, but that's, that's a whole right. other conversation. That's yeah. a concern, right? But that's the complexity part of yeah. it. To simplify it, you have to be able to be unmanned, right? So if you're going to have all these data centers spread out, you don't have your own people there, and you probably don't have the providers people there, especially when it gets more and more distributed for things like IoT, and where you want to get out closer to the edge, where the sensors are, and where the customers are. So you have to come up with telemetry that lets you instrument as well as monitor and maintain all of these applications that are going to get more and more distributed. So essentially take the software that used to run the data centers and then move yeah. that out into a distributed set of data centers. Yeah. That's the complexity that's trying to be automated. That's right. That's what you're trying, okay. Yeah. And the dynamics and impact to the customers would be? Well, I think one of the things that we just began to touch on today in the panel is that uh, where strategic decisions are now made corporately has changed radically. Right? It used to be that the CIO and the CTO were kind of the holders of strategic IT. And what's happened now is that's moved way down the stack so that people down at the development level, at the DevOps level, and at the systems admin level, and architecture level, are actually making strategic decisions because it's workload centric. It's application centric. It's no longer a huge monolithic physical billion dollar decision you're making about your data center. You're making these micro decisions all the time, right? And that's only going to increase, and it will increase to the point where it's actually all done in software. Well, let's build on that for a second. Um, so that. Uh, in fact, uh, and there people won Nobel Prizes for this analysis, in fact, generally speaking, we institutionalize the work around the assets. Right? Right. That's kind of, it's a, the not we build cars. Yeah, exactly. So we have an asset, and we figure out who has claims on that asset. Uh, we do have to share it. Okay, we're going to institutionalize the work to make sure everybody gets their claims. When the asset is a fungible, heavy duty, CapEx thing, that leads to one institutional form. Now, the CIO was the king of 
those assets. But now, as data become recognized as an asset, and the question is how does it get shared, how does it get utilized, how does it get deployed, it means that because it's so shareable, and it's not necessarily limited to one group of person, that those decisions naturally start to move down in the organization to where the data is being used. Right. Is that kind of yeah. the, the kind of the underlying dynamic here? Right. Absolutely. And I think that that's the you know the CIO uh, you know, Gartner calls him what the bi what bimodal CIO bimodal IT. I call him bipolar. <laughs> it, what's really happened is that uh, it, 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 every enterprise is somewhere on this continuum. Some are way up the scale, you know, in hyper scale data centers, very purpose built, built very vertical in nature, uh, very granular in how capacity decisions are made, right? It's down not just at the rack level, but the half rack level and, and on. Uh, and and yet there are enterprises, and I, I shouldn't say this, but I, I think of Google versus Century Tire, right? Their needs are entirely and, and utterly different. And my guess is that Century Tire is still thinking about their data centers mm -hmm. as depreciable assets, 15 year term, right? Major investment where the rest of us are thinking, how granular can we get this? How, what's the smallest increment I can possibly buy in order to run this app? I think you're right about how uh, it was the CTO and CIO, and now it's kind of further down where it starts. You have a, a systems architect that knows that he needs to deliver a real-time analytics application, right? And so he's got to figure out where to run Kafka, Cassandra, Spark, and HDFS in order to satisfy a need for the business. And where he picks that, uh, the C CIO and CTO don't really care, and certainly no one above them. They just know they have to create this new application. It's probably microservices, container-based. Mm -hmm. So where can he do that? Does he go and buy it as a service? Does he go to Google and get TensorFlow as a service? Or does he run TensorFlow open source himself in a colo? Uh, you figured that out. But just be on time. Well, but let's so let's make let me try to make that a little bit explicit. You told me we got it right, Mike. Uh, when when the execution of the decision can move down the stack, the need for governance becomes much more crystal clear. Hmm. When we had an asset and we were making decisions about that asset, the governance decision was embedded in the asset. Now we're talking about distributing decision making out and it becomes that much more incumbent upon the business to offer very clear, streamlined governance models. And that seems to be one of the drivers behind this continuum of data center because the decision about how to source your technology needs is very, very closely tied to your overall governance model, the governance model you should use, because you are you going to do it through contracts, right. or are you going to do it through normal HR coercive kind of methods, but you got to start doing it. And one of the reasons why people are using third parties is because it forces that governance conversation because you're embedding it in a contract. Right. At least I think so. Do, yeah. do you see that as well? Yeah, we definitely see that. I mean, uh, you need the SLA, you need the governance, and you need a way to uh, turn up and turn down, I think is the big thing. And, and you know, you need to buy in, you need to buy one piece of gum. You don't need to buy the Costco case of gum, but you also have to have all of those things in place. Well, let's bring it down to a developer. So the Chernoff Group, Jim from the Chernoff Group was talking about this earlier about how the business conversation around security drive down. So let's yeah. go to the, the DevOps guy, the guy who's who was racking and stacking servers, worrying about top of rack switches versus, you know, this, that, and the other thing. So they had their, what they call them pets and cattles and mammals, whatever it is. That, But that guy now has to have invisible infrastructure. He's composing solutions. Right. So that, that need is to actually access a fabric of resource, in, independent of what's underneath it, to yep. provision compute, storage, networking, to run a specific workload. Yeah, That's the discrete that, unit I think you were referring to, so that has to have everything embedded. Is yeah. that kind of where that? Exactly, That's the, to build on your point for a second, governance is going to happen in software. 
It's not going to happen by heavy-handed HR and policy manuals. It's going to be embedded. It's going to be part of AI. It's going to be part of you know everything that we do. The, the RFP will go away. The SLA will go away. And the sooner the better, frankly. Mm -hmm. But certainly within a five-year time horizon, 90% of all capacity decisions are going to be embedded in rules in software. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll push you on that a little bit. Um, oh, I'm not, no, 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 I'm going to, no, no. And, but, but, but I'm not, not going to disagree with you, but I'm going to push you on it. So that, it, so for example, many years ago, I sat down with the CEO of a large pharmaceutical company who was making a decision about whether or not to buy SAP. This is many years ago. And he ultimately decided to buy it, and his exact quote was, I'm sick and tired of process arguments. So by buying SAP, he poured SAP on his business, and that became the process model for his business. The similar type of thing is going to happen here, but we're to where we can use software from an administrative and management function or standpoint to start providing or pouring some of this governance over the, over the organization. But there is still a lot of very subtle things we have to think about when we think about data as an asset and how the business uses data and how the business treats data. And those have to be a little bit more explicit than just bringing in software, just kind of spread peanut butter across the organization. No question. I, I agree with that 100%. However, uh, when SAP lost the battle was in 2007. Right after that, cost really became the driver, right? And if cost is the driver, doing it, automating it in software yeah. is the answer. Well, now, now cost is one driver. Now revenue generating, this is where the agile thing comes in. It's interesting. So cost was a 2007 problem or indicator of where you were. Now it's agility, right? So now it's the, how do I drive revenue from my business? That's interesting around how you make a DevOps infrastructure as code. So the question to you guys is, for this new cloud trend, um, we were having this debate uh, in our office last weekend on our show, our Cube show for a Friday Cube's uh, day on our podcast. Will every net new application, whether it's net new for the enterprise, net new meaning not legacy, and all cloud native apps eventually run in a cloud? Yes. Cla Absolutely, without Absolutely. a doubt. Hundred, yeah, that is, yeah. seems like a no-brainer. So yeah. that's, I think, where everyone's kind of realizing, okay, but not necessarily Amazon per se. Amazon for some stuff, but the new cloud could be this kind of yeah. co-location, facilities outsourcing, hybrid cloud, or ultimately off-prem in a yeah. in a way. Well, there could be. But not 100% off-prem, but I'm trying to get to is, if every application, new application goes yeah. to some sort of cloud model, what does that look like and what's the impact of that? Well, there could be, you could see a kind of a fragmentation sort of in cloud and hosting where there's very specific providers that are a AAA rated in a certain area. Maybe someone only focuses on, we were talking about AI and then we were also talking about you know medical and MRI sort of latency that you need. Maybe someone's better for that than Amazon. In, right? in other words, it's not going to be defined by the way the hardware is deployed, it's defined by the way the sure. stack is deployed. Or service. Absolutely. And maybe someone is the best at uh, hosting machine learning applications and ML and GPU and maybe someone's has a great cryptography solution that people want to, you know, host there. But it's all going to be public. <laughs> it's all going to be cloud. <laughs> well, look, with hooks to something well, on the business side. This industry is on an inexorable march to public infrastructure. It always has been. Because when you go to public infrastructure, digital technology has shown that the, the more the larger your market, the more you're going to make money. And by having it look more public, more and more and more, you increase the number of applications that you have access to. So we're trying to take out what's known as asset specificities, get to public infrastructure, increase the size of our markets, and that is unassailable. Yeah. We're going to get there eventually. It's multi-tenancy squared. I mean, that's that's the way they're going to have to do this. If Even if you're a niche guy coming up, right, or a colo provider trying to transform, into more infrastructure as a service. You, it's all, you have to harness multi-tenancy and that's where software-defined networking comes in. And but even two years ago, you'd have a conversation with the CIO about the different options and it was, do you want to own the hardware, do you want to co-locate the hardware, blah, blah, blah. It all centered on the hardware. It was, that's right. the, all, the, the market was segmented by where the hardware was. And you've just introduced, you know, 
you're, you're amplifying this notion that it's not where the hardware is, it's the quality of the services that end up being provided, where a medical service in the cloud is going to have different security, processing location, administrative cost, everything yeah. else, compa you know, compliance, compliance and for sure. you're going to buy that assortment of services. Correct? That's right. Great. Guys, great stuff. Last minute, I just want you guys to just talk about the impact of the customer. If you're an enterprise buyer um, and looking at their data center, what should they be thinking about right now? What are the things that they should be doing? What steps do they need to take to be safe, secure, and on the right path? Well, I think there's more options than ever, and the proliferation of open source has only expanded that. So if you look at where we're headed even with things like OCP, Open Compute Project, uh, Open 19 that LinkedIn is driving, there's, there's a commoditization, there's a push towards open source, and there's more options than ever. And so, I would make sure that you're on top of all of those options and understanding um, you don't have to buy proprietary software for everything anymore. You don't have to buy proprietary hardware anymore. You probably can get everything on a lease, right? Then not to not do that um, could be a detrimental effect on your business. Yeah, great. Bruce, any comments to add to that? I think agility drives a great deal of this, right? The requirement now is on 90 day, day cycles, not on 10 year cycles, yeah. right? Yeah. So the more that people understand that and begin to move in that direction, one of the things I, I often say is, if you don't now have a DevOps team in your organization or contracted to you, you're dead and you just haven't gotten the memo yet. <laughs> <laughs> Get men walking in the data center. That's a good, that's a good show, show format, uh, including Netflix, you know, right next to Game of Thrones and House of Cards. So, guys, thanks so much for sharing the insights here in theCUBE. We're here live for the I.O. Conversations, live in Silicon Valley for a special CUBE presentation for Data Center as a Service event, and we'll be back with more after this short break.